We are live. It is March 30th, 2024. Officially the Dingus Day Party here at Eastern Market Brewing. That's right. It is Ken Beck, episode 43 of the Michigan Beer Series. With me is my co-host live at the brewery, Wendy. Wendy, how you doing? I am fantastic. How are you? I'm well. What are you drinking over there? I am drinking the Dingus Day Lager. Perfect. That's actually what I've got, too, and I've got a, uh, a nice little hard seltzer that they got over here at Eastern Market Brewing, which we're definitely going to be touching on in a little bit. But we do have two guests in our studio, makeshift studio, inside the barrel room here at Eastern Market Brewing. To my left, why don't you introduce yourself, tell us who you are and what you do here. Uh, hello. I'm Adam. I am the head brewer for technically Elephant & Co., but Eastern Market Brewing Co., um, been with the company almost three years now. Um, happy to be here. Awesome. And uh, right in front of me to my right, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us who you are and what you do here. Hey, y'all. I'm Tony. I do the social me- media marketing for uh, all the brands under Elephant and & Company. And uh, so that includes Ferndale Project, Eastern Market Brewing Company, and our vegan donuts, Duke Donuts. Well, let's kind of catch us up, because the last time we had Eastern Market in our studio, it was a COVID show. We were on Zoom. We had um, different people on the show, so we're going to get a decent opportunity to learn a little bit more about how the business has expanded since, uh, for the last two, two and a half years. Um, Let's first start off, what is Elephant & Co.? What is the genesis of Elephant & Co.? Um, And along with Eastern Market, Ferndale Project, and Duke Donuts, what is the other pieces of that puzzle for the business uh, uh, well, it all, Sony? Yeah. yeah it all started with Eastern Market Brewing Company obviously um, and then I don't know if, what if everybody knows the backstory but we uh, acquired a place in Ferndale right around COVID time when was that like right February before COVID? 20, 20, 2020 pretty yeah, much okay. yeah okay so like a month before a month before pandemic. everything happened and uh Obviously dealt with like a lot of change with that uh, building. And then Dupe Donuts became another asset we acquired in that whole process. And just from all that, um, Dane always wanted to make like an umbrella company or like an umbrella to like kind of house all these different brands we have. So that's kind of where Elephant and Company came from. And uh, pretty soon there will be two Elephant and Company uh, locations. Now, you guys have a location in Royal Oak as well, correct? Yep. It's not a brewery, but what is it? Uh, well, so it is a brewery. That's our main production facility. Um, we've got a 30-barrel system up there. Um, that tap room has been open almost a year now, maybe a half year. Uh, last October, we fully opened um, with always the idea of pizza and beer. Uh, that's like the Elephant & Co. brand. Um, and recently, we've finally got our approval to make pizzas out of that place that has a kitchen so uh we're you can enjoy pizza in the tap rooms uh as well as soon to be home delivery we've been testing home delivery out of um our midtown location um but that tap room is not open yet um and those both those tap rooms are self-serve so you pour your own beers um that, that's with the key fob technology, correct? Yep. Um, pretty new kind of technology. I mean, it wasn't approved in Michigan until last year, so it's kind of new for everyone. Um, but now all these self-serve tap rooms are popping up, and uh, we're just one of the few breweries that actually make their own beer and then serve it. Um, but those are always good locations to try, like, our wide array of brands as well. Um, so it's kind of fun to have that option as a customer i think um but the royal oak location is where like all the elephant juice gets made 313 correct. that's our all the big brands yeah. so where you're canning and all that mm-hmm. yep okay anymore the eastern market tap room has kind of just become more of a tap room we did the dingus day lager here but all the large-scale stuff uh happens in royal oak now now, there's, there's rumors, and when I mean rumors, I overheard people talking about maybe doing open fermentation here at Eastern Market Brewing. Is that in... That is the goal. The goal, okay. Um, to be determined when that will happen. Uh, ideally, we want to open that Midtown location and start using that system um, and actually brewing beers out of there. Um, 
How big is the system that's, in the, the Midtown location? So that's a five-barrel system, so it's the same size as down here. Uh, but it's a lot fancier and way more high-tech. Um, so <laughs> we can do more fun stuff, more collab beers. The stuff that we kind of do down here, um, just over there, and then we'll turn this into, yeah. A sour house. Before I pass it off to, to Wendy, yeah. you said high tech. So for me, the not yeah. like I'm, I'm a home brewer at best. Sure. Um, and what what does the the technology do? How does it help you? What does it change? Like what are these processes that you get to do at the uh, Midtown location in Detroit versus what you won't be able to do here in Eastern Market? Sure. And you you guys saw the system in action. Uh, it's it's pretty manual, you know. Uh, I think we might have had a couple of hiccups uh, in the beginning, kind of. You know, like our boiler kind of goes on the fritz sometimes here, but um, a lot more automation at the Midtown location. So everything's you know controlled from a computer screen. You can everything is like Bluetooth enabled. You can control your pumps from your phone. It's so I always joke that you can have you know when when. Can brewers brew from home, you know, like work from home culture. Uh, and I believe that space you actually could. You can control valves, you can send water into tanks, you can clean a tank all automatically without touching a single thing but your smartphone. With that kind of capability, could you open it up to kind of what like Saugatuck Brewing does where they have like team building exercises where companies come in and brew their own beer mm, and kind yeah. of have their own experience there? Is that something that's uh, possible there, or is it maybe even way too high tech to where you need that? No, totally. It's just a different style of brewing. Not style, but different, you know. Um, yeah, there's less uh, feel of it and more, like, technicality, I guess. Or uh, you get very, like, rigidness, so it can be. I mean, it's like the most primo, like, pilot system you could find. So you can maintain consistency through that. Um, ideally, we wanted this space to, I mean, it has turned into kind of our collab space, so where we bring in brands and other companies to brew their own beers or um, beers for them. Um, and so we'll use that as that space. And so I think, you know, better brews out of that system, just more consistency. And, um, yeah, it'll be fun when we get the license. Yeah. So, speaking of collabs, you brought us in to help brew a beer. Sure. Um, what made you guys decide to do a Dingus Day celebration? Um, I think that kind of started with just the popularity of the Poonchki party and the Poonchki beers. Um, and obviously, there's like a lot of Polish roots in Detroit. So, it just kind of stemmed from like after this year's uh, Poonchki party, it was like one of the best days we've had in general sales wise um we were like oh what what else can we you know what what how else can we like you know use this to our advantage and then our uh, vp pauline uh came, told came up to me and she's like have you ever heard of dingus day and i'm like absolutely not and i'm pretty i'm pretty polish <laughs> and uh it's a weird it's a weird celebration uh, it's typically the day after Easter's over, so like Fat Tuesday, it's like uh, the opposite of that. When once lets over, you kind of like do another celebration um, that way. Wet Monday. Yeah, <laughs> there's that whole aspect with the pussy willows and dumping water on people. I don't really understand that part, but uh, I'm still trying to figure it out myself. Yeah, well, it, it, it was all it was all meant to be a uh, almost like a prayer to the gods because it's supposed to be from the March equinox for a good harvest okay. for the spring. Okay, so you're so, like so you know how people you know this is this is definitely very not subtle but like you know hey we're gonna do all this stuff because you're the in poland they couldn't i believe they couldn't get palm leaves for palm sunday so they uh uh, blessed pussy willows to kind of take the place that was the first plant that bloomed in the spring that's why they used it yeah Ah. okay yeah uh yeah it makes sense so we just kind of tapped into that and actually in like i guess buffalo chicago cleveland it's a very uh big celebration now so we have a lot of polish heritage here in detroit and we just decided to uh, why not throw one more party uh you know <laughs> jam one more in there <laughs> so we brewed the dingus day lager why don't you tell us about the beer um yeah pretty you know basic light lager um 
be honest, I don't know what a Polish lager meat like what makes a Polish lager a Polish lager, I guess. Uh, but we used a little bit of Vienna um, in the mash, so you get that like sweetness out of it. Um, a little bit of just noble hops in here, uh, I think two pounds, so for five barrels, so not a ton. Um, but this one was fun because we spunded it, so we kept all that natural CO2 in the beer, um, and it be honest i think it kind of leans a little flat but in a good way um <laughs> but i think it's good it's a good this may or may not be the last uh beer that we brew out of here that's not a sour beer um so that's a little exciting uh that it turned out well um yeah i think people like it it's uh, just light crisp i like to blame my export expert uh Hot pouring skills yeah, for that. Yeah, you did a great job. <laughs> we, we did have a lot of fun coming in. I appreciate you guys opening the doors to us to come in, help brew the beer. Um, we use the term help very loosely when you and I Very. Um, we were there. Uh, I feel like we might have drank more beer than we uh, did the actual brewing process. But, you know, that's I've been told that's what you do when you brew. Yeah, when you're, that's how those go. When you're the collaborator. You stuck around a lot longer than most people do, so... Oh. <laughs> I, I feel if, if we're going to slap our name on something, we want to make sure that it is, uh, you know, we, we do our part mm-hmm. uh, for sure. This is the fourth official Better on Draft beer. This is the first lager that we've done. Uh, cool. um, we've done two alt beers because everybody knows on the show that I love my alt beers. So we did an alt beer at North Center Brewing, RIP. Um, we also did a peanut butter pale ale for opening day. Uh, this would have been 2018, I believe. We got to do it with Brad Etheridge. Um, over at at Water in the Park, Sweet. so very very great beer. Um, we got we got a lot of little flack here, and I kind of want to bring this to uh, the social media guy here in a second. But I'll uh, make sure to lead in the question very long. <laughs> Do you run into a lot of issues because you're you're reading the comments, you're reading the the posts, the untaps, the responses when you make a beer that is kind of like another beer? Meaning, so our peanut butter pale was kind of like. Uh, peanuts and Cracker Jacks from Mitten Brewing. Mm. Oh, yeah. And yeah. apparently you can't make a peanut butter beer or a peanut beer uh, if somebody else has already made a peanut beer. But do you see that mm. when someone tries to bring in, like, a, a specific flavor profile and they're like, oh, my gosh, somebody else did it? So, yeah, I mean, speaking of peanut butter, we just released uh, Peanut Butter and Jelly Porter, right? Yep. Um, PB and Jelly, yeah. which Elk no longer exists. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we just released that. Um, I did get some, you know, you do see some responses about, you know, this brewery has done it maybe or, you know, something like that. But people are usually willing to try our stuff, which is, you know, which is a great thing about all of our followers and our members. Like, everybody gives us a shot. So, I mean, in the world of food and drink, beverage in general, I mean, there's going to be crossover. So, I don't know. There's only and it, it, there's only a finite amount of uh, original ideas out there. So like, what are you gonna do? You know, it's it's more about just doing it right than like kind of being different. Sometimes I think it's funny that you bring that up too, because like now we've been around, you know, five years. We have this bank of recipes, but now we're getting into the fact that like we've already, you know, I don't know what what new stuff can we do now? You know, like um, I feel like funny, yeah. what's old is becoming new again. I feel like I'm seeing a lot of... Well, you know, we always talk about each year is going to be the year of the lager, and it never really gets there. The oh, it's the getting old. And it getting never old. really, it never gets there yeah. to the the love of like when black IPAs exploded. Mm-hmm. Uh, like even if we got that much, like you know, a New England IPA, that's a whole other story. But black IPAs, uh, brutes for a while, sure. um, sours definitely, especially in this area because we have. Uh, nucleate, so of course a lot of sour lovers here in Michigan. Jolly Pumpkin, you know, being the the standard bearer for a lot of sour programs. Have you guys made sours here yet, or so we'll do kettle sours? Uh, we've never done wild sours. Um, What's the difference? Kettle the sour asking? is a uh, we're introducing lactobacillus uh, into the kettle and then kind of letting it sour in that kettle um, for a couple days. So usually, typically, we brew them on a Friday, let it sour for the weekend. Um, And lactobacillus is, like, not a 
wild sour, so you can kill it off by boiling it. Um, it's pretty maintainable. Um, it's cheap. Um, it comes in like dry packets like yeast. Uh, whereas a wild sour will infect your entire brewery and space and all your equipment, all your hosing. Um, kind of like a sourdough starter where that bacteria is on those bakers' hands. It's, it's on the tables. It's everywhere. Um, and so once you introduce that bacteria into a sour house, then it doesn't really go away. So that's the, the fear. Like once you infect a brewery, then it's always infected. But... Uh, you know, if we can use it to make beer, then that's a good thing. But um, I wanted to get back to on the point you were you were bringing up, uh, just um, stuff that we've done before, kind of thing. And I think we uh, are in like a special situation now where we're starting to branch out. You know, like Tony said, it was cyclical. You're you're pulling on old trends, but now I find that we're diversifying our liquids. Uh, you know, we're putting out hard seltzers. We're putting out NA products. Um, so either, you know, these things that are kind of booming in the market, but it's also just fun to play around with new, you know, NA products that people haven't done and uh, new seltzer ideas that people haven't done. And it, it's it's kind of fun to make, try to mimic a macro brewery without, like, throwing a bunch of fruit, like you said, into a seltzer and calling it a seltzer kind of thing and it's really like drinking a smoothie but um, we, we, we talked about it before the show started and yeah. when you run into seltzers and then you run into like an untitled art seltzer sure or you run into smooth Holds their own place yeah or exactly. you run into like that's but that's what you think of when you think of craft seltzer sometimes I, at least I feel like most people yeah that, a lot that, of times you don't see like you know something that looks like a white claw you know well, the the mass produced craft seltzers <laughs> yeah. is basically like Wild Basin, which I think is it's either Canarchy, I think it's Canarchy, um, but I know Canarchy or what Monster Brewing I think is the official new name for them now because I think they just changed over to Monster mm. after Monster purchased them uh, a few years ago. Um, like I love going and seeing a brewery that has a wide selection. The problem is is that I'm I personally. And like like Wendy, I'm pretty sure you love like those Belgian strongs, those doubles, triples, quads. Whereas for me, I'm looking for English milds, alts, ESBs, and your diversification is NA and seltzer. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. But I am starting to see a lot more of those styles. The ones that Wendy and I like are starting to pop up at breweries a lot more and. Um, within Mothfire, which is a massive brewery. They're known for their IPAs. They're known for their mm-hmm. barrel-aged beers. But when I went there and tried their alt beer, the guy was telling me it was their number three seltzer, and I thought he was full of shit. Mm-hmm. And then I went back a week later, and they were sold out. Yeah. And it, it was that good that I went back a week later to grab it. But how do you manage brewing what you want to brew? Yeah versus brewing what everybody wants to drink. Sure. Uh, there's a fine line, for sure. I guess that was my point, too. Like, it's interesting to see craft breweries not brewing beer anymore. Like, you're... I mean, you are brewing beer, but you're also brewing other non-beer s- stuff. And so, like, I think half the stuff we make is, you know, not classic beer. It's an N.A. product. It's hop water. It's seltzer. Um, cold brew, even. Um so how do we manage that? I mean, we're definitely, at, at least under the Eastern Market brand, we're definitely more traditional, trying to kind of appease people, whereas Ferndale Project, we would take more risks and uh, yeah, it's be nice a little more experimental kind of with two that. two different brands where you can do one, stay a more traditional route, and Ferndale Project was always meant to be, like, more experimental. Um, totally. Yeah. Less, like, mass-produced kind of beers. And we all, you know, we're all on the same brew team, so it's not... The brands are separate, but the brewers are crisscross all the time, so we work with Ferndale all the time as well. Do you think um, that kind of sets you on the, the same level where, like, Nubco is right now with Jolly Pumpkin and then Blue Tractor and North Peak and Grizzly Peak? Like, they have yeah. all these different yeah. brands, and you'll see all of them together when you go to them because most of them are brew pubs. So mm-hmm. you'll see North Peak at Jolly Pumpkin. You'll see North Peak at Blue Tractor. Um, is that... S- 
was that the initial plan with Elephant & Co.? Is kind of like looking at what they did there, or... Uh, I think it definitely helped uh, having this, like, overarching company. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you talk about brand identities. It's, like, hard to nail down what Eastern Market, I guess, is. Uh, same with Ferndale, other than calling it an experimental brewery, but... Um, I don't know, to get on your question, uh, how do we feel like we're, like, what was your question? I don't know. I've asked, yeah. like, four questions <laughs> in the middle of these questions. <laughs> I, I guess how, the, the initial question was, how do you balance oh, yeah, yeah. brewing what you want to brew versus yes. what everybody else wants to drink? And I think you kind of answered yeah. where you are blessed with um, multiple identities sure. because of the different breweries that you have where you could say, hey, this is an Eastern Market beer. This is a Ferndale Project beer. Definitely. And people kind of understand the, the differences. Yeah, and and like I said, too, with, uh, you know, sh- not necessarily shared brew teams, but uh, we all work together. We're not separated. So, you know, say someone's more inclined to make a sour, then, hey, he'll make the sour today. You know, uh, someone has an idea for seltzer that, you know, I don't really drink NA products, but... Um, someone on the brew team maybe has an idea, so we'll kind of share that. And um, I don't know; it's a good. It feels more collaborative now that we have so many products that we can kind of pull ideas from anyone, and um, it kind of feels lawless sometimes, where you know we can kind of make up our own rules, and kind of do what we want. But obviously, we're taking notes from you know what's done well in the past and. I, I wouldn't say we're chasing trends. The, the seltzer thing is probably the biggest, most like prominent, and NA um, is like chasing a I trend mean, or I mean, trying to appease to the consumer. The the trend for seltzers was back in 2019. Like sure. your craft seltzers, I should say. Yeah, you're, you know. you're not necessarily chasing it as much as joining it. But the NA, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, no, for sure. The the NA part itself, I mean, that's not necessarily a trend as much as the next generation of drinkers, your yeah. Gen Z, your mm-hmm. Gen Alpha, don't want booze. No, they want flavor, but they don't want booze. Yeah. So I think you're going to start seeing a lot more of these craft NAs where you can get beer like without the booze. Um, and I, me personally, like I feel like this is where um, Casamara Club is going to really be on top of the game because I think a lot of people are going to look over at what Jason Laval is doing over there and be like, wow, look at all these different flavors we can have without the hangover, without the buzz. Like, oh. And also the price point. Like, everybody didn't want a, you know, Bud Zero because it costs the exact same as a Bud. Right. Like, that was the hard point. But now you've got a uh, N.A. Amber from Brooklyn, like the sure. Hoppy Amber. Or you have all these other N.A.s where the flavor just tastes like beer. Yeah. So you're getting it's the worth beer. paying that price. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like yeah. Guinness Zero. Have you had Guinness Zero? Great. Oh, my God. Right. I, I... The first one I had, I'm like, this is ridiculously good. Mm-hmm. And it's the same price as Guinness. Yeah. But if I don't want to drink, but I want to have something flavorful, like, I don't want something super sugary, like, like a Coca-Cola or something yeah. like that. And I really, you know, I'm trying my best not to drink diet sodas anymore. So what's left is, you know, something that's going to give me a little bit more flavor. Sure. Uh, I've been trying to pass it off to Wendy for the last, like, ten minutes. So. I know, but I was listening to your... Um, poetic talk about the NAs that you really like. So I think, though, that kind of just goes to the fact that the whole beer industry has changed so much in the last few years. Oh, yeah. When I first started drinking beer, when you went to a brewery, one, you didn't get food. That was non-existent. And it was, you know, five or six different beers. That was what you got. And now there's so much different variety everywhere you go. And there's different types of food, and people want to go to the brewery almost like they want to go out to dinner at a fancy restaurant. Like, they want to have a bunch of different things available, so it's kind of necessary to have that diversity with the Ennies and the seltzers and have things for people to drink that don't drink beer. Totally, yeah. And maybe that's, you know, half the reason, because we're finding that someone comes up to the bar, hey, what do you have that's not beer? It's like, well, you came to a brewery. Uh, (laughs) But that question comes up so much more nowadays than it did even two years ago. So, uh, 
At least it's not, what do you have that tastes like Bud Light? Yeah, l- yeah, a little less than that. Yeah. That used to be a really big question. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I'm drinking, if I'm a Bud Light drinker, I would give this to a Bud Light drinker, and I think they love it. Like, yeah. it's, it's that right amount of sweetness. It doesn't have, like, a um, sour beer taste, like someone who never drank a lager before. Like, sure. it's, it's very, very, um, it's very good. Like, I, I think we did a very good job, guys. I'd give this to a High Life drinker, not necessarily a Bud Light drinker. I don't know. Bud Light's my first, like, the macro I go to. I'm a Miller Light drinker myself. No shame. I, <laughs> I'm with I, you. I uh, bingo square. I I went back full keto, and when I go bowling every Thursday night, I have a twenty ounce Miller Light and then uh, three ounces of Woodford Reserve. Nice. Like that's 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 my instead of oh, I used to do a pitcher of Miller. I'm like pitcher and then a pint. Yeah. And now I'm like you know uh, I can now count my carbs and looking at my net carbs. Like oh my god, what it is? All right, twenty ounces of Miller Light and then whiskey. I'm gonna switch to Michelob Ultra now. <laughs> Carbs. Miller Light. <laughs> Miller Light has like point one more carbs yeah. than. Mixed oh yeah, truck. that's their stick. Yeah, that was. Yeah, right. yeah there was um, a whole thing. I remember when Matt Bush came onto the show, one of the very first times, and that was the first thing he told us was like how he would sell so much Miller Light versus Mick Ultra hmm. was literally just by telling people, hey. Th- these are the little differences. And then you start seeing it in the commercials yeah, where, yeah, like, the, yeah. the flashing sign, only one more carb, only one more calorie or whatever it is. Um, I, I want to get into social media a little bit. Uh, we've had amazing social media people on the show that have given us a lot of information. How do you manage trekking through the alcohol and social media rules um, within, like, TikTok and Facebook and all those things? Because you can't... There, there's rules, there's loose rules, but you still have to follow certain things. How do you balance that? Uh, yeah, so, I don't know. I, I, I try to follow. Like, I try not to do... As long as you're, you're not doing anything um, egregious, like, stay away from, like, chugging, uh, like, on the camera and everything. But, like, I feel like we are kind of just enough under the radar to where we can get away with a little bit more, like... Bud Lights and your big domestics, like they have obviously so many more eyes and scrutiny under the, under them, which is like a big problem. But we can kind of like get away with a little bit more, even even more than like a shorts or something, just because um, our audience is like pretty local. Obviously, we want to get to the point where we're huge, and I would be having to be a lot more strict on myself with what I can post. But um, yeah, I mean, I just. TikTok is a weird thing because it's such a young audience that it doesn't resonate with, like, breweries at all. Um, so, I mean, I've tried, like, Instagram, Facebook, it's it's a lot easier to grow your audience because that, that, that is your audience. Uh, TikTok has been, like, a, a struggle to even, like, I, they, I think, one, they are a lot more strict on what gets... Uh, continually like reposted because you could put something up and you're not necessarily going to get reprimanded but it'll get it'll get kind of shuffled beneath you know it won't get put up in, on everybody's page like that and TikTok is just very it's it's a Gen Z app and even though I think they're growing up yeah it just doesn't resonate with like breweries at all it's kind of weird we I see skits. a lot of breweries yeah. <laughs> they do like the skits and yeah. dances. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, you never really know with TikTok what is actually going to take off and what's not. Because there's no, like, specific time that you can post. Like, I've mm-hmm. tried all that different. Yeah, you're almost better off, like, getting away from the alcohol part of it and just trying to, like, lean into the bartenders and, like, um, the community aspect of it rather than the, the product itself. I, I finally just hit a thousand people and I'm a thousand followers and I'm like super excited. It's taken me like two years because it, it's hard to figure out all that, the way to get people to pay attention. Yeah, if you don't get one of those blow up videos, like if you uh, are unaware, so the one of the owners of Presidential, Kaylee, um, she had a random thing uh, with her and her dog that went viral. 
and like overnight and I'm looking at this and I'm like I recognize something something's in this TikTok I'm recognizing <laughs> it, it had to have been the dog because obviously I'm friends with her on Facebook and I don't think anything of it I don't look at the username or anything like that and I go through and then like the next day I see her post and she sees like this giant growth and I'm like that's kind of what to kick off your social media you mm. need that one thing that one spark that gets shared a little too much or did you guys see the video of that guy opening the tank oh yeah that, uh, that gets reposted I was trying to time. convince Dane to just like have us you know accidentally do that <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that like just got wasted. Yeah. and uh, they got a lot of exposure, though. So, oh yes, <laughs> but here's the thing, though, is is that they got a lot of exposure. What's the name of the brewery? I yeah. don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was trying to find that. Yeah, I want to know who fucked up. So we all know <laughs> yeah. about that, but how do you capitalize? On yeah, that's what the, that's, that's what they should have done. They should have used it to their advantage. I mean, at that point, you're almost better off making a beer with that name. Yeah. Like, well, almost like, well, Broke still exists, so you can't do blow your face out uh, or blow your face off or whatever. Or the uh, their double IPA is, um, but I mean you could you could figure something yeah. like you know we need to create some type of tragedy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if that's that's how you. Think it is on social media. <laughs> so I want to talk about naming beers because I was campaigning pretty hard to name this beer Wet Monday. Yeah, you can call it that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, we ended up with Dingus Day Lager. So how do you guys decide what you name your beers? Um, yeah, that comes down mostly to our sales team. You know, um, we have beer strategy meetings every week. Uh, but yeah, it's mostly mostly our sales team thinking of what, what people would like to see on the shelves. Um, something that kind of catches someone's eye. Um, Something like this beer, it's pretty obvious that it's Dingus Day, and maybe people don't know what Dingus Day is, so I think we'd rather call it that, where it's like Wet Monday. People are like, well, I don't know, I don't know what that is either, but uh, I don't know. You put wet in a name. Usually there's a, a little more meaning to it for the Eastern Market beers. Like, they're kind of seasonal IPAs. Uh, elephant juice has always been elephant juice. But with Ferndale... We have so many releases that it's kind of just like, yeah, we have a beer strategy meeting. We just, like, throw 19 things on a whiteboard <laughs> and just kind of, like, circle two of them and call it that. <laughs> like, There's usually some sort of meeting, yeah, or, like, double entendre about yeah, what it is. Uh, but, yeah, most Eastern Market brands now are either set in stone or, or are part of a series, uh, yeah, weather series or are... We are flannel. in the process of rebranding our Imperial Sours. That going is Going for like true, a yes. higher ABV. Um, and that's like an interesting one because we're trying to like kind of sell it as not a beer, like a craft cocktail, even though it is just an Imperial Sour. But like our, our we're trying to like kind of sell it as something else um, just because we are in that like era of like canned craft cocktails. So we're trying to, like, kind of make one that's a beer, but a sour. I think you've had a couple that are very similar to craft cocktails mm-hmm. that are very, so we're that kind have of been very successful. We, we called it, like, the Margarita Ghost and all the, um, Cranberry Cosmo we just came out with, and they're really good. Um, but we, we're just calling them sours. Now we're going to try to, they're going to be, like, uh, 10%, right? Mm-hmm. And we're going to lean into, like, calling it, like, 20 proof. Okay. Yeah. To try to, like, and we'll uh, that can that those in sleek cans as well, so it'll be more. Yeah, I, don't know, I think of like those Bacardi and Coke cans, you know, like right. the RTGs. Um, but yeah, so th- I think we found a lot more success in the cocktail-inspired sours that we found than you know heavily fruited sours or um, just our Goza series in general is not as as popular as it once was. Um, so we're kind of trying to shift that into either beefing it up and then yeah throwing a canned cocktail kind of it. so I do have a couple questions about kind of what's next um, one we have a lot of people which I've just recently learned that follow us from out of state so where can you get your can you get beer from Elephant & Co out of state can you, you do that yet there. 
Yeah, you can't really get it because uh, we self distribute. Okay. Um, and I don't, I don't know the laws exactly, but we're basically not allowed to ship our beer out of Michigan. Okay. So we do work with uh, some international brands like. Uh, why is it blanking? You can go to, Chi- you can go to China. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not Trudor. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. what's what's the, the yeah. name of that? It's a uh, subscription online subscription kind of thing, yeah. where you buy the beer. Tavor. Tavor. Tavor, yes. <laughs> uh, and we've that we can't get here. Sent a couple things to Maybe. China even randomly. Um, just these small markets that want to buy our beer. Um, so you could find us there, surprisingly, but. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, people so, people would need to like reach out to us and buy like a pallet of beer and come get it. Correct. Yeah. Take it out of the state. We're, but because we're doing like our own distributing, we're not allowed to go past Michigan. Is that a it's Michigan kind of, law? It's a Michigan law. Okay, yeah. that makes sense then, because Michigan laws kind of suck for yeah, distributing. It's, it's pretty lame. <laughs> yeah, I, I get a lot of people that actually do ask me. I mean, there's people out in Washington, and I'm always like, well, I can send you, like, a four-pack or something in the mail, but, like, I, you know, we can't, like, actually uh, distribute out of state. It's yeah, I, I kind of want to be like, Gretchen, you talk about beer in Michigan all the time. Um, help us get our product out there. Mm-hmm. Like, it drives me insane. The, the large issue is with the larger brew where they don't want that increased competition. So Easter Market was on the forefront of uh, the entire production increase. So you guys were able to increase internal distribution, increase personal distribution, as well as eliminating internal numbers. So when you brew something and sell something here, it doesn't count towards your distribution numbers. So that was massive, but these big breweries don't want the competition. Um, and that's the same also with a lot of uh, bars, taverns, restaurants and stuff because if I can go and I can go get now, I can order the brewery. I can be there in their subscription and I can get the brewery beer here in Michigan. That eliminates me going to, say, former sponsor 3 Next Scoreboard over in um, Allen Park. Uh, so it it hurts a lot of these biz- – not hurts a lot of these businesses, but it obviously will take a lot of money away from these businesses – but in the same token, I don't think they understand that if I got a beer and I ordered it and it came from me from Tavor or whatever, and now I know I can get it at uh, Hopcat, you know, sure. big poor houses, Hopcat, Three Nicks, mm-hmm. all these places, or I can go to Zatuna Liquor and I can buy it off the shelf at Zatuna Liquor. Maybe not their really special macadamia nut barrel aged, you know, twice barrel aged rose, tequila, whatever beer. I can go to Zatuna and go get, you know, Black Tuesday. Because they're going to have it on the shelf. Like, these are the things that I don't think a lot of these places have the foresight to look for because they're going to lose that right away dollar. And for us, like, we've always talked about wanting to expand the ability to get more beer in Michigan, be able to buy more beer, be able to ship beer. Like, you know, just as much as you, we can't get the beer, we, the royal we as the consumer, you guys can't ship your beer. Mm-hmm, sure. So now you lose on all of that. You lose on the fact that somebody has to go up to you know Detroit from Toledo to go get your beer. They can't yeah. go get it in Toledo or they can't order it to get shipped here because a lot of these people will pay for that shipping. Yeah. Oh, I love your beer. I'm only in Seattle once a year. Now I want um, you know red envelope and I can't order it because I can't get it shipped here. So it's I, funny that you say that because I think now too, especially craft beer is so saturated that, and I've seen so many breweries that are, you know, refuse to use the distributor, which is totally fine. Um, but you, you know, it almost like forces you to you have to go to the tap room to buy the beer. It like almost makes it more of a special thing, kind of sentimental, you know, value to that product versus oh, can I buy it online and have it shipped to my door, kind of thing. Uh, yeah, and I don't know if that's the intention, but, you know, that's kind of how I think of it. Well, we, we I, I like to make that pilgrimage, you know, sometimes. Um, but I, I don't think you're not going to not make that pilgrimage. I think you're still going to go there because sure. and, you're going to want to go. Like, it depends if, on your, like, uh, idea of growth, too. Like, if you want to grow to a size where everyone in the nation can drink your stuff, you know. Um, but but my my big comparison is, is like say you love white labs like you want to try something or maybe you're a brewer and you want to try how they made this yeast into that beer yeah 
well, do I have to go all the way to fucking Chicago to yeah, Omega man. Yeast or White Labs in Asheville? Or can I order that beer so I can try it and see that that yeast profile is good? And sure. I, I think the, the positives outweigh the negatives, but the um, the government spending or government donations, we'll say, from bars, restaurants, taverns, these places just really hinder your ability to grow. And with how our government works, like when COVID hit, I think like b- b- between, you know, and, and this isn't like a, a partisan issue, like every, like we, we had um, that young lady on from Water Levette. We had the guy on from Rochester Hills, both Republicans, um, you know, Gretchen Whitmer, obviously we talked about as a Democrat, like we've had all these people onto our show and like the guy from Rochester Hills, that was the guy that started the drinking district law. The, the lady from Water Levette, that was the one that you guys worked with to get the increase in distribution. Like that was the main signer. I think you have all of these things you can do, but now that COVID is gone, yeah, quote sure. unquote, yeah. um, that you're not going to get that expedited uh, laws passed. Those changes in laws from being yeah. able to deliver and hand deliver mm-hmm. and distro. You know, I remember speciation would have like each day, like there is a territory where they do delivery, and like that was just the day of the week you got delivery. Now I don't know if you could do that anymore. If the law kind of came back, I know the drinking districts cha- uh, stayed, the distribution yeah. laws stayed, but all those things that were COVID protections to help you mm-hmm. guys kind of went away, and now you're kind of sitting here like, all right, how can we expand and compete? Yeah, that's funny. It's, I mean, COVID like helped so many businesses sort of hurt definitely way more but uh like you're talking about yeah just shifting kind of the ways that we do um distribution and stuff like that so um it's funny the stuff that sticks around and then shifts the whole craft beer market and now it's a time of no covid yeah quote unquote Uh, air quotes (laughs) because we're not on video anymore um all right i have uh we, we end the show with a fun final question um, and as we're kind of tying up, because I promised the, the random lady who walked in on our show <laughs> party. Uh, that we were only going to go for 10 more minutes. Um, so we're going to finish with a final question. This is kind of like a, a fun question, especially after that whole government. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to get cut on a tangent. <laughs> side effect. Oh, I get on plenty enough by myself. That's I a big one for help. this company, though. Yeah. Um, all right. I personally, Ken, am anti-flight. I want flights to go away. Flight. Oh, flights, yeah. beer flights, yeah. not not airplane you know, flights. Trains. Yeah, trains only. <laughs> trains only. Yes, yeah. that's like call them beer trains. Um, <laughs> Anti flights. That's funny. Hey, tell that to our bartenders. They'll, they'll love you. Do are you? Oh, so social media. Obviously, you want people to show flights. You want them to show all their beers. You as the brewer, you know that this gets to, everyone gets a chance to try every single beer. Me as the person who's worked with thousands of different bartenders wait staff and stuff like that is the, they hate flights yeah are you pro flight or anti flight i mean i'm pro flight um but yeah i'm the guy you know trying to sell the beer so <laughs> yeah i want i want people trying as much as possible I find myself, and it's funny, my dad kind of was like, what the hell are you doing? And the other day, uh, uh, tried this new brewery with him, and I'm going to get two sample pours every time, and then, you know, so I will have a pseudo flight, but it'll be stretched out between, I'm never going to get a full five Five samples at a time. Yeah, I'll get one or two, see what I like, you know, try two more. It's like the South. Maybe I won't finish one. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's a uh, spirit sorry, flight. Really spirit flight, yeah, there you go. But that's the cool thing about our new uh, self-serve pours is you can do your own flights. So Yeah, but at that point, you're doing your own flights. You're not exactly. paying someone to pour you yeah. six four-ounce pours. Sure, and, sure. I don't know. I just don't like it because the, the, the bartending side, like the mm-hmm. pain in the ass that it becomes, yep. and then the customer side of destroying your palate. Uh, yeah. In between all these different it's also like, yeah, what uh, what are you picking for that flight? You know, yeah. Are you, are you picking all IPAs or are you picking across the board? I feel like yeah. I'm, I'm like alone on my He's island not, on this anti-flight. Ah, I'm kind of weird though. Like, if I were to get a flight board, I'm, there's one of those in that that I'm, I have to like, you know, choke down. 
where I'm like, I don't want this, but I, it's in front of me. That's why I do it, though. And I'm finishing it. I want to try the different varieties. Kind especially of. if I'm only going to be there once. Like, who knows when I'm exactly. going to get back there? I want to try everything. Yeah. So I would like to ask out to the people that are listening, um, I would like the bartenders to give us their input. I understand that you don't like the flights because they are a lot more work. But would you prefer that we did it sample at a time through a space of time or just ask for a flight and you finished with it and we're done? So just let me know what you think. There, there's a happy medium. It's called half pours. Yeah. You can, that's it. Yeah. Wendy, what's it's your final question? Thing. It is not the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. It is not the same oh, thing. Just, Unless you're going to dragon meat and you're getting six ounce potato, flight. Potato, like, potato. Yeah. I almost think flights are more interesting now in distilleries. Like, I prefer that in distilleries than a cocktail or or some sort of mixed drink. But I can't say much. I went to um, uh, Moonshine Distillery in Canada. Yeah. And was able to try a bunch of different flavors of moonshine, and it was a weird, fl- like, everything. Like, there was, like, a creme, like, a cream moonshine. I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> Wendy, what's your final question? Uh, what is next for you guys? Uh, just get just get the location at Charlotte open yeah. and uh, start, start turning and burning out of there. I think... Uh, that's that's been like the next step for the last couple of months, and we're getting really close now. Um, our beer garden is actually opening up next week um, on the weekends. Uh, we're gonna have a bunch of nonprofits come through so that we can uh, get licensing to open up the beer garden before the actual tap room's ready. And where is that? Uh, on Charlotte Street. Um, so it's Charlotte and okay. Cass, right behind Masonic Temple. Yeah. Oh. Um, because we want to have that going for a tiger season and all the concerts going on there. And, um, yeah, and then ideally by June we should have that tap room open. So, And then we'll start brewing out of there, too. All right, uh, well, that's yeah. going to do it. The Michigan Beer Series live here at Dengas Day at Eastern Market Brewing. My name is Ken Wendy. Thank you so much for joining us. For our guests, thank you so much for spending an hour with yeah, us. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. We are going to stay here and party a little bit with some yeah, pierogi pizza eat some pierogies, yeah. and uh, plenty of other amazing beers to try. Uh, don't forget to like us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. I said Facebook twice. Uh, Twitter. Twitch, Kick, Rumble, Grinder, I don't care. Just search better on draft. You'll find us. And no matter what you think of your beer, we think it's better on draft. Have a good night. Cheers. Nice.